holds on the door, so maybe in like 30 seconds. Maybe. Did I mention I really hate YouTube Live? Like, almost everything about this platform is subpar. It doesn't subpar. work very well. No. Is there something else we could use? We could theoretically use Twitch. I don't think I've ever, uh... Oh, oh, there oh, it is. Oh, we're live, thankfully. We're live! All right. So welcome back to uh, Screenwriting Live. If you, I'm not sure if that previous introduction got, but uh, let's try it again, just in case. Uh, to do something a little different, Rose and I are going to try and improvise a scene. Just write it right on the spot. And to do this, we're going to use uh, theyfightcrime.org, which is a great random website that pitches random stories. Um, this is what's called a onesa plot. It was coined by Roger Ebert in the '80s, and in the '80s there were a lot of buddy cop movies. Like he's an uptight cop. She's a maverick who breaks all the rules. They fight crime. Right? So the one's a plot. So uh, I'm just going to... This site just uh, randomly uh, uh, will generate a lot of different options. So I'm just... Cover your eyes and just uh, tell me what to stop. Okay. Stop. All right. What do we got? He's an underprivileged, sweet-toothed photographer from a doomed world. She's a provocative communist opera singer prone to fits of savage, blood-crazed rage. They fight crime. All right. Wow. <laughs> All right. So now we need to execute it. There's no, there's no such... All right, people come to me at parties a lot, and they say, I have a great idea for a script. And what I always want to say is that you may have an idea, but its greatness and its suitability for a script remains to be seen. Thank you. I say that about everything. I feel like, I mean, we have brains. We're humans. We all have good ideas. We it's actually, executing them. We actually have 100,000 ideas a, an hour, I think. Yeah. Something like that. And most of them suck. So imagine if we were paid to deliver this particular idea. Um, we gotta find something interesting in it, because they fight crime is the most arbitrary possible pitch ever. Mm -hmm. That's like saying comedy ensues or shit happens. <laughs> comedy ensues. So, underprivileged sweet tooth photographer from a doomed world. Um, oh, I, I guess our, my first question is, is it a literal doomed world or a figurative doomed world? I guess that's a choice we can make. I mean, this could be like a weird, like, Gotham City superhero type of shitty city all right if we want to take it literally okay and he's an underprivileged guy so he's from the inner city mm -hmm. probably lives in a really bad neighborhood like a really terrible new york apartment with roaches in it okay So I'm not really setting this anywhere, but it's a Gotham City type thing. Mm -hmm. The world of candy photography. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. We actually have viewers now. Thanks for watching, Lorona. Thanks for watching. Art Deco would be between... So, rather than actually figure out a city or do research, because I'm, I'm under a, a, a time deadline because you're watching live, I'm just making it this. And yeah. This tells you a lot about the city, because you got stuff to play with. It creates a mental picture. Uh, homeless men.
Should he be like sucking on a lollipop while he's doing all that? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, pulls. He, uh, oh, how about this? He opens his camera bag, which has a bandolier of uh, Tootsie Roll Pops of every different color. He selects a red one. and looks for his next picture. All right, so what do we got here? We got an ordinary world. Mm -hmm. I feel like you got a base reality. Here's Arthur. This is what he does. He looks for thi he lives in the inner city. Mm -hmm. And he's looking for interesting photos. Mm -hmm. We kind of know what his deal is. Yeah, you know he's a photographer with a sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. We know it's like a doomsday world. Maybe he walks up to his apartment and the opera singer is his neighbor and he hears her singing and he hates that. Okay. That could introduce her pretty easily. Like he's she's always practicing in there and it drives him goddamn insane. Great. I like that. If you're just joining us now, we're just uh we came up with a random pitch off of theyfightcrime.org. We picked it randomly. I got no way to prove that now, but we did. <laughs> And uh, we're writing an establishing scene. So now, um, um, int apartment building day. Arthur returns home to um, a once to to his. Arthur returns home to his apartment. He checks his mail in the lobby. Lots of, um... Bills? Yeah, lots of bills. Clearly his photography is not paying them. He winces. Maybe they're like late notices? The lobby was once luxurious and grand. Uh, the lobby was once luxurious and grand. But it's, but is now as dilapidated as the rest of the city. We just type in what we're doing in the room topic so people uh, can get up to speed. Yep. Thanks. Into Arthur's apartment night day. What's the name of the website that we? Uh, Theyfightcrime.org. Arthur. Enters his sparsely decorated and encourage them to ask questions or chime in, please. Decorated apartment. He sets his uh, camera and laptop on a TV tray and begins downloading the day's photos. We see moments of poverty sadness, and horror from the crime-ridden streets. Arthur reacts to each one as they flash by. As they flash by, saddened by the moments he's captured. I feel like there should be like an old lollipop on the ground with a cockroach eating it. Oh, that makes him a slobby uh, photographer. And That's true. Do we want him to be a super clean? Well, you're diluting it. So we've now hit every one of uh, Arthur's little traits. Yeah. The other one is... God. She's a provocative communist opera singer prone to fits of uh, blood-crazed rage. Okay, so I'd say he either hears her singing or he hears her fighting. Um, and it's a common occurrence that he can't What I'm deal thinking with. is you would do a scene like um, he hears singing from upstairs, and um, 
He's like, hey, keep it down. Then you hear footsteps clomping, 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 mm-hmm. getting closer. And she's like literally punching at the door. Like, it's like I like that, yeah. That knocks out the opera singer and the fits of rage. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting. He puts on some music and pop flops on the couch. The couch. He puts on some class, uh, some R and B music. Then flops on the couch. Um, just then, a woman's voice cuts through the tranquility. She's screeching. Um, fuck. Oh, I don't even know a famous opera. Uh, Madame Butterfly. God. Uh, she's screeching opera at the top of her lungs. She shouldn't quit her day job. She can quit her day job. Arthur sighs. He tries to ignore it, but the uh, singing gets louder and more strident. Finally, in desperation, he grabs a broom and um, and uh, gives the ceiling a gentle yeah. tap. Because I feel like if he's kind of chill about it, yeah. then her Coming rage from, is from more uncalled for. From the apartment above. He, finally, in desperation, he grabs a broom and uh, taps gently on the ceiling. Oh, Carmen. That's a good opera. Yeah. If more specific. any of us knew a single piece from Carmen, that would be amazing. But we don't. You, you did ballet. How do you not know anything about opera? Uh... I don't know. They shared the opera house, and I never went. <laughs> I don't know. I think they're. I think I saw one, and I don't even remember what it was. They're just so long, man. And taps gently on the ceiling. The singing immediately stops. Then the footsteps begin. Heavy, clomping footsteps. That Arthur tracks them with his eyes as they head to the hallway outside. Side. Down a flight of steps, then closer and closer to his door. Knock. Knock. Um, three violent knocks. Three. Vi- the knocks are violent <laughs> and uh, and scary. <laughs> Menacing, maybe. Yeah, scary word. Provocative. How could, how could we show that in this context? She's provocative. Arthur opens the door. Wait, does that mean, like, sexually provocative? or? It could be anything. Like, given that they fight crime doesn't use commas, um, if it, it, there's a difference between a provocative communist. Like, hey, stop being not a communist versus yeah. I'm provocative and also a communism. Right. A communist. Uh, what do you want to go with? Um, given that it's TV, let's just make her naked. <laughs> yeah. Or wearing, opens like, the door, a, uh, a robe that's kind of see-through and nothing crack. under it. It's still... Um, still kept secured by a security chain. Need a name. Mm-hmm. Carmen. There you go. Thank you. Thanks for the inspiration. Carmen. 20s. Stands outside. She's wearing a sheer um, kimono. Yeah, yeah. With deep cleavage uh, um, that shows surprising, surprising uh, tr- that that uh, that that, uh, that is that's surprisingly transparent. 
When I write stuff like that, are you visualizing this? Yeah, I feel like I can, I can see what you're talking about. The hall lights behind her. Um, uh, Arthur tries not to look at the dark circles of her areolas. <laughs> You know, th that's how transparent it that's is. That's how transparent we're talking to people. Just to give you a visual here. Mm -hmm. well, she is pissed off. Yeah. Not happy. She's, um... Pretty angry. She continues to knock on the door with knuckles that have turned bloody. Alright. Uh... Communist, her arm, her arm is tattooed with a blood red communist hammer and sickle. Hmm. There you go. Carmen. What the fuck, asshole? How the fuck? Where the fuck am I supposed to practice? Yeah. What would Arthur say? Um, where the fuck am I supposed to relax or something like that? Um, I don't know if he's that aggressive. He probably I don't think it like, is. Well, where am I supposed to relax and sleep? Where am I supposed to relax and sleep? Then Lord Carmen. It's three in the afternoon. Get a fucking job. Well, she's a communist, too. Yeah. <laughs> In character. Alright, what would Arthur... Uh... Um... I don't know. It depends how, like, sassy you want to make Arthur. Because he could say something like, well, get a hobby you're better at. But I don't know if he's a little well, nicer than what that. What is he feeling right now? Um, I think he might be a little scared of this girl. I mean, Look, if we want to give it some... I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I shouldn't have... I shouldn't have bothered you. Uh, your, your voice is... Your voice is great. <laughs> Carmen. Oh, shut up. It's average. But that's... The beauty... Of communist... The, of, of communist theater. <laughs> it's about the... Intent... The intent of the performance. <laughs> Not the skill set. Yeah, that's a funny explanation of why she's so terrible. Alright, so that's the key, that's a meat cue, which I hate writing. So given that we have these two characters, how would they fight crime? Let's cut ahead. So anyway, shit happens. And they find themselves in the middle of a, I don't know, r race riot? A, po a zombie attack? Um... Middle of a... I mean, maybe somebody gets murdered in their building like a I mean if, if we want it to tie in with the fact that the city is falling apart well I guess it could be any of those things that caused it like it an be, ongoing it could be any of them but they Fight Crime shows the danger in having a setup that is more interesting than the execution. Mm -hmm. Because They Fight Crime covers a multitude of sins. They could be literally doing anything. Yeah. Um, if you were to commit hours and hours and hours and hours to writing a pilot version of this, what you're implicitly saying is, I need every single detail of these two uh, character setups to make their crime fighting interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, pushing ourselves, how the it, fuck do we, like, what can we do with this? If we make it stuff? interesting, it could be something, like, very personal to both of them. Um, like, a mutual friend gets wrapped up in some shit where they have to save them, or... Okay. They're murdered, and they have to get revenge. 
Um, it could just be the photographer, and then she just is such a feisty little wild card that she just wants to go along. Okay. I mean, it also depends if we want to make them love interests, which I assume would spice things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the most interesting? Uh, From a Doomed World is cool. I liked the Doomed World aspect and the crime that they're fighting tying in with the reason the world is doomed. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Um, but I guess we haven't um, clarified what that is yet. All right. So let's do this. Anyway, Arthur and Carmen's nice guy landlord gets killed. There you go. Simple enough. Right. Um. Arthur and Carmen are both suspects, briefly, mm. which leads Carmen to recruit Arthur to help her um, figure out who really did it. Figure out who done it. She needs Arthur because he knows the neighborhood really well. Because he's a local boy. A local boy, and she has a tendency to fly off the handle and hurt people. Mm -hmm. Hurt people. She can't risk another parole strike. Their investigation. Should it, should the landlord be her uncle or something so she's even more invested? Sure. I feel like that just gives her more incentive. A photograph he took has the clue they need. Mm, that's a good idea. Okay. Their investigation um, begins when Arthur finds um, a mysterious man in the background of three photos he took that day. They track him to a cab company which seems like a dead end until int diner day Arthur and Carmen eat lunch at a greasy spoon so I'm thinking like maybe um, uh, Arthur's about to give up Carmen uh, you know doesn't want to but has uh, sort of uh, you know, like, no ideas. And a mysterious man comes in. Not the mysterious man, but, like, a thug comes in. And he, like, he stops sniffing around. And then uh, Carmen literally, like, breaks a coffee cup in his face. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. And that, like, with these two specific skills, they need to affect some kind of clever escape. I like that, yeah. All right, so start thinking of a clever escape while I set this up. I could also see Carmen being really impatient. Yeah. So she's like over it. <laughs> she doesn't. Just then, a hulking man enters. He wears a tight, ratty, Springsteen t-shirt. Over his uh, steroid bulging muscles. He makes a beeline for Arthur and uh, Carmen. Heard you two been a couple of busy bees. So 
poking your nose where you don't belong. I'm here to say, smash. Smash. Carmen shatters um, the coffee cup into the man's face. <laughs> She's a loose cannon, I like yep. it. The man stops talking. <laughs> he, um... He touches his flattened bloody nose in disbelief. Oh, you ought not have done that. Ugh, this is supposed to hit a, a new line, but whatever. Um, it's supposed to hit a what? It's supposed to go to action every time I hit enter, but it's not doing that, so. Lame. The man advances on uh, Carmen. Arthur stops him by uh, throwing his camera strap. <laughs> he has it around his throat like a garrote. Right. The man, uh, you know, roars and, you know, I don't know, struggles around. This is getting generic. Um, finally, the strap breaks off the camera. My dumb idea to escape mm -hmm. was, um, because I don't know how I guess we didn't totally paint a picture of Arthur. I kind of imagine him being a little nerdy. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than trying to fight, he could just like take a picture of the Flash, like really close to his eyes, blind him for a second, mm -hmm. and just run away. Like Arthur falls to the floor. The man starts beating him senseless. Say cheese. Ugh, why did you do it? Why are you doing this to me? She sets off a flashbulb an inch from his eye, blinding him. Carmen and Arthur run out of the diner, and let's say a chase ensues, uh, which I don't feel like writing, ensues. Carmen and Arthur steal a scooter and escape the thug in an SUV. Let's say, let's pretend that was interesting. Yeah. And um, afterwards, Arthur. That was crazy. You're crazy. All right. I told you to never give up. All right. Anyway. She holds up a Bruce Springsteen wallet. Arthur, is that Carmen? Yeah, I stole his wallet while he was kicking the crap out of you. <laughs> she looks through it, finds a bunch of business cards for a cannery company previously established on the wharf. lead. 
maybe the there's a picture of somebody yeah. like the owner of the cannery company and it's the same guy that's in the photographs mm -hmm. and the plot continues you know obviously we could go on all day yeah uh, the struggle with the scene like this is you know it's very difficult to bring all the elements in but um i mean we got everything from that description right this is proof of concept you know we have karma as the wilder one uh, Arthur as the tamer one, mm -hmm. and I'm not particularly interested in this character set, but we've at least shown proof of concept of what their interaction means. Mm -hmm. You know, we can kind of see how they fight crime, and you know, there's some of these that might be more visual. You know, Do they uh, always end with they fight crime? Yeah. Is that what the website's called? That oh, I didn't even realize. Clever. Like a boxer versus a satanic cult would be more movie. Event. <laughs> like I can actually see that. Like that's an easier scene to write. That's funny. Uh, skateboarding farm boy on the hunt for the great mysterious uh, mystical creature. Great, his his investigation leads him to find a de demonic barmaid. Yeah, that's a little easier to write. So mm -hmm. we actually picked a very bad one. Huh. This one's all about the characters, and presumably it would take, uh, the adventure would take him somewhere through the opera house. Uh, opera, and you can kind of tell that one's a shitty pitch because opera and photography don't work well together. Like, two, op two feuding opera singers who are fighting a crime together who hate each other because they're both divas. Right. That's actually slightly more fun. Yeah, I mean, you kind of lose the opera singer aspect once the adventure starts, the way we wrote it, it mm -hmm. seems like. Also, but yeah, they could end up it, in an opera house. It would kind of help if I like, gave I the faintest shit about opera, which neither of us do. Yeah. Uh, drug There's ways we could tie it in. Drug-addicted barmaid married to the mob. All right, that's interesting. Maybe they're both mistresses or, you know, they can... But the point is, they fight crime. You can't really pitch like this because that's like saying, trust me, it's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. But ideally, you're going to want to write a scene that shows off what is interesting or not interesting about the scene. And um, as evidenced by this particular attempt, Rose and I were unable to make this particular uh, story all that interesting. But um, ideally, you should be able to come up with something, mm -hmm. both to set up a character, which we did, and then to pay off what's interesting about their particular dynamic, which we didn't because this could be any wild and crazy partner straight man scene so you know we kind of went to the generic well on this one uh, i mean it, it is kind of like a typical buddy cop there's the crazy one and then there's the rational one yeah yeah the old the old trope the problem with what we just wrote is um it falls into that old uh dealie um the script is both good and original unfortunately what's good is not original and what is original is not good so i i i would not give myself a gold star on this one but the trick is on the stuff that you uh end up writing in your own life uh, to make it at least as good as like the, as the shit you don't care about and yeah. for some reason that's awful hard to do that is hard to do so this is a good exercise yeah chat room any questions before we sign off for, for good and all now we gotta give 30 seconds for the chat room to catch up oh man Matt what have you been up to this week what have I been up to this week I've been doing a lot of swing dancing and salsa dancing nice. I actually think I might go out tonight and uh, oh, do swing and salsa oh you okay what's your uh your favorite dance? Um, I'm better at salsa, but I think swing is more broadly applicable. Um, I feel like it would have been so fun to go to swing dancing, I don't know what they even call them, bars, like in the 40s when that was super... Was yeah, like... yeah that would be real fun for an Asian American person. <laughs> Check your privilege. Oh man, uh... Alright, I, I don't think we have any questions. Have you ever seen Swing Kids with Christian Bale? That's a weird movie. It's a real, it's not, yeah. I feel like I saw it when I was really young, so I can't really remember, but I don't think it's, like, that great, necessarily. Doesn't his... he, like, become a Nazi? Actually, I once wrote a movie that's a little bit like Swing Kids by accident, and then I saw Swing Kids and I was very disappointed. Huh. I'll tell you about it sometime. Was the script better than the movie? Was my script better than the actual movie? No. I, I, to the best of my ability, I could not surpass Swing Kids. <laughs> but it remains a labor of love and one that I might revisit someday. All right, well, thank you for watching. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to uh, contact me via my website or on Twitter. Let me get that information up. Uh, this week, uh, week of the 9th, I'm doing a special $20 for coverage. So uh, if uh, you send something this week, uh, just mention that special, and I will totally redeem it. And... Uh, the man of his word. Anything you want to plug? Nah. Alright, well, thank you for watching this special episode of Let's Write, and uh, that's what writing something from scratch looks like. Uh, maybe we can find a way to refine the formula in the future. Take care. Thanks, guys.